So we will want, the, there's a trend for custom made, there's a trend for watches that are unique, there's a trend for watches that are different, there's a trend for watches that are, uh, uh, th that you are the only one to wear. So more and more custom made. Um, that is a, a, certainly a trend. Then there is another trend going for watches that are more and more sophisticated. For instance, as I said, the key of time. That is certainly a trend. People will start using the art of making watches in order to create dreams. And a dream is not necessarily only a minute repeater or a, uh, a perpetual. Of course it's a dream to have a perpetual. But once you have one or two perpetuals, maybe you want something different. So uh, the art of making watches will go into direction of the dream of the irrationality. Those are some trends I can see in the upper segment. I mean, it's all back to vintage, shows you the poverty. When you don't see the future, you want to repeat the past. But uh, the future is so rich, the future is so bright, that somehow it's a tragedy to repeat the past. Let the past be glorious buy vintage watches from the past but are you so poor that you have to buy a vintage watch which is not a vintage watch because it's made today and it looks like the one of yesterday is does this bring something is like if our uh, painters would paint uh, Monet or Picasso or Matisse what's the sense which artist would like to redesign what Matisse did Matisse has existed, by a Matisse. The painters, the artists, never repeat the past. And we should be ashamed to repeat the past. We should take from the past the richness, all what we have, all this glorious past, and we should combine it with the future. But if we only repeat the past, then it's a copy, it's a repetition. And the repetition has zero value. But if you buy a vintage, a real one, at Christie's or wherever, from the past, that has a value. But if the same watch has been made, it's like if you would do cars that look like a cars from 1951. What's the sense? Yes, I worry, I worry. I, I will worry that Hublot is overexposed because Overexposure is not good, but when you start from nowhere, remember in 2005 we were not existing. The first Big Bang came out in uh, June 2005, so it's now seven years. We are seven years old. When you are seven years old, you still need to go to school. <laughs> you still need to learn. You still need to grow. And we will be overexposed in a few years, but not for the moment. When I go to China, when I go even to the States, when I go to, to certain countries in the world, and I say Hublot, they say, what? Excuse me? Oh, I've never heard about it. So, the overexposure is a risk. We should be very clear about that. But it's too early to talk about overexposure. But believe me, one day, I hope, we will suffer of overexposure. And that day we will reduce.